To grow Zambia's economy, we need to support our very own. From mining to manufacturing, general service and all locally motivated effort in between. This means we live, eat, drink, work, play and sleep a local Zambian lifestyle. Support local products and businesses because nothing beats unity and loyalty. Zambia's glory is a shared responsibility. We need to support that which is ours. Buy local. Local is Laka. Buy Z. Buy Zambian local products and services. Social economic growth, national pride, and jobs. <laughs> Happy Africa Freedom Day. It's the 25th of May, 2023. Welcome to Crown TV Grand News. Our headlines. President Hichilema honors 22 Zambians at this year's Africa Freedom Day celebrations. ZRA intercepts 358 smuggled bags of millimil destined for DRC. In our international news, fighting reported despite humanitarian truce. To present the news in detail, my name is Tandiwe Banda Kavaso. Zambia has today joined the rest of the continent in commemorating Africa Freedom Day under the theme Acceleration of the African Continental Free Trade Area Implementation. President Haga and HLMA led officials and diplomats in laying wits at the Freedom Statue in Osaka. And in given homily, Reverend Samson Zulu said it is the responsibility of governments to ensure that every Zambian attends the much needed economic freedom, adding that there is no peace and freedom in poverty. Later, President Hichilema held an investiture ceremony at State House to honor those who contributed to the nation in a special way. President Hichilema honored and awarded 22 citizens in recognition of their contribution of service to the country in various fields, among them three being awarded posthumously. The recipients included first female High Court Judge Florence Mumba, who also served as Electoral Commission of Zambia Chairperson during a colorful ceremony in commemoration of Africa Freedom Day at State House. Herbert Zulu Mbukisita Lewanika was also honored under the Order of the Eagle of Zambia 3rd Division for their role in the struggle for Zambia's independence. Here's a report. There is no peace and freedom in poverty. Those were the words of Reverend Samson Zulu, Assistant Commissioner and Chaplain at the Zambia Correctional Service in his homily during the laying of writs at the Freedom Statue today. President Haka and Hichilema led officials in laying writs at the Freedom Statue in Osaka in commemoration of the African Freedom Day. Participate 
is a business of which we well for this nation. My prayer, therefore, Mr. President, sir, is that Zambia shall be able to embrace your philosophy, even as you keep on talking about this, and now this is becoming as a slogan, and always to tell us as Zambians that we need to work, work, and ensure that there is more work in Zambia. And so, let me see that in this passage, our friends in Thai were able to take advantage of the conducive environment to do business in that small city, but it goes with a lot of wealth. President Haka and Hichilema then left for State House and held an investiture ceremony to honor and award those that served the country in a special way. President Hichilema honored 22 people who include veteran journalist Mpondo Mwape. You are currently an act of for the Zambia Act of Freedom of Your contribution was for is worthy of special This year's African Freedom Day has been held under the theme Acceleration of the African Continental Free Trade Area Implementation. Christine Mapani, Crown TV News, Lusaka. The Mofluya Freedom Fighters Association has urged government to reward and recognize freedom fighters. This came to light during this year's commemoration of the Africa Freedom Day th under the theme Acceleration of the African Continental Free Trade Area Implementation. Association Chairperson Wellington Walia has told Crowd TV in an interview that freedom fighters are neglected and that their plight is not looked into by government. Mr. Walia further stated that freedom fighters need special incentives from government to make their livelihoods better. Another freedom fighter, Maurice Temple, reminded government that the freedoms currently being enjoyed are all as a result of efforts being made by freedom fighters to liberate the continent from colonialism. And Mufliwa District Commissioner Savoy Kavin. Kavila said government will always endeavor to recognize freedom fighters. Ms. Kavika said the independence that the continent is enjoying should not be taken for granted. Details in this report. Celebrations to mark the African Day, which commemorates the founding of the African Union, have taken place in Mufulira on the Copper Belt. This day entirely lies in the collective Africa's resistance to colonialism and economical exploitation. And one of the freedom fighters in Mufrira, Maurice Tembo, has reflected on Africa's sovereignty. The African countries now are liberated. We are sovereign countries. Zambia is a sovereign country because of fighting for freedom. Individual countries, they're the same. In fact, there could have been some first countries in Africa, those who decided fighting for independence. And we went on until Zambia itself got independence in 1964. So for the, all, all Zambians or all Africans, they should realize that the freedom that we are now enjoying came from a sweat. People fought for it. Blood was shed all over African continent just because of liberating ourselves. Mufura District Freedom Fighters Association Chairperson Wellington Warrior has urged government to recognize and look into the plight of freedom fighters. I, I know there are a lot of things that uh, uh, you people may think of, or uh, the, the freedom fighters rather that these people should be acknowledged or be considered for whatever they've done in this country and uh, Africa as a whole. Because uh, without that, it, there will be nothing that will be known by anybody that these people had suffered for this country. The freedom fighters have called upon the present generation to help better their livelihoods. Now, it is up to you, the upcoming generation, to consider the old people. It's not everybody who has died. We are still there. They are still there. So there must be a very serious consideration. What do we do 
to these people who have died. Do we have to leave them as they are? Or do we have to at least consider them in some way, settle them? In a way, some other countries, most especially here in Zambia, some other countries have cared for freedom fighters very adequately. But have we done that in Zambia? If not, why? The government should take care of these old, us old people, freedom fighters in particular, by giving them certain incentive. You know, when you do the work, you expect a reward. So when you're not rewarded, then you, you are sidelined, as it is now. I'm afraid District Commissioner Saboy Kabika has explained government position on this matter. This is a very important day for Africa, for Zambia as a, as a region. But we are celebrating this day. It reminds us of our friends who really fought for this independence that we have. That we should not take this independence that we are having now for granted. There are people who died for it, there are people who really suffered for us from this freedom that we have today. So this day is very important that we should celebrate it, honor it and respect those who fought for this and cherish the freedom that we have and continue loving one another and praying for those who left us that they did a good job for us. On the 20th of May 2023, five young men of Lusaka Stilente Township were arrested for allegedly setting ablaze a 25-year-old man. They remain in police custody awaiting to be formally charged by police. Police spokesperson Ray Hamonga said they will be charged as soon as post-mortem results are out for the deceased Charman Jovo. The five might be charged for arson or sodomy if police conclude their investigations. Zambia's penal court carries the highest pen penalty for sodomy in the southern African region, 15 years to life imprisonment. More in this report. Homosexuality is romantic attraction, sexual attraction or sexual behavior between members of the same sex or gender. Lesbians, gay, bisexual, and transgender LGBTQ persons in Zambia face legal challenges not faced by non-LGBTQ citizens. Same-sex sexual activity is illegal for both males and females in Zambia. Formerly a colonial British Empire, Zambia inherited the laws and legal system of its colonial occupiers upon independence in 1964. Laws concerning homosexuality have largely remained unchanged since then and homosexuality is covered by sodom laws that also prescribe bestiality. Homosexuality is a crime punishable by law under sections 155 and 157 of the Penal Code Chapter 87 of the Laws of Zambia. Recently, there was a trending case in Lusaka Chilenji Township where a team of allayed gay men bent a 25-year-old chairman Jovo for merely discriminating against them. Five suspects have remained in police custody awaiting to be formally charged by the police. The post-mortem results will determine the charge to be slapped on the five suspects. Chairman Jov was yesterday put to rest at the old Leopard's Hill Cemetery here in Lusaka. But the pain of his demise is still fresh in the lives of his family. Police are yet to release the post-mortem results to ascertain what really transpired on that 30th day. Blessings. Mkandewa reporting, Crown TV News. Meanwhile, some traders at Lusaka's Kamwala markets who sell outside the shops have complained about the threats of a possible eviction from their shops by the Lusaka City Council. The traders say the decision by the council is rushed as they were not informed in good time. In an interview with Crown TV News, one of the traders, Messi Ngoma, has alleged that the Lusaka City Council sold the said piece of land to a Chinese businessman only identified as Lee Munyale. The traders have since vowed not to vacate the place, adding that the council should find them a permanent trading place. Details in the following report. 
Si ma ripide, la prima canso, every man, 125. Ia land. Mangia la camba, ti muoio la mari pida land. Mi siamo a papà canso, ma tenga curiri, curise. La prima, una come chinese. Ndia, ma se ti ma ripida, every man, ti ho siamo a contena muona. Each shop, io la ripida, 125. Moila market protested Thursday morning against a possible eviction by the Lusaka City Council from the land they are trading from. The traders who have vowed not to vacate from the land in question because they have offered letters from the council have charged that they will not leave because they were not given a notice beforehand. As a citizen of Zambia, and the president is in that position because of the people of Zambia. So, us as the citizens, what are our benefits? Because if we are taken off from this land, meaning it's like we are foreign. Yeah. Because this is our land, we are entitled to this land, so the president should look into it. Amen. And another thing is, the council, they are in charge of this, the land issues. So if anything, they are the ones who sold the land to Mnyawde. Yeah. And Mercy Ngoma, one of the affected traders, has alleged that the council has sold the piece of land in question to a Chinese national identified as Li Munyaule. The traders claim that some of them have been trading in the market since 2002 and it is unfair that the council wants to evict them. Purity Matafwadi Crown TV News Lusaka We take our first set of commercials. Do join us for more news items after this break. Oh, the first thing I'm going to say, thank God. All right, bye. No wonder I'm so excited. Your name is there? Yes, I still can't believe it. Wow. Anyway, congratulations. Me, last time I bent it down. But why? Uh, you see, my life is down. I can't. Why would I be watching my TV? And that meant I have to give her my latest double door fridge. I call her. But haven't you heard of Savenda Solar? What? With Savenda Solar, you can live off the power grid or not get bothered with long hours of load shedding or power blackouts. Power lighting for your farm, house, office space, or the great outdoors with zero noise. No pollution to the environment and absolutely no extra costs to your pocket. For orders and details on our international standard Savenda Solar products, call us on 0971-850-031. I wanted to find out, is my place still available? Savenda. Save nations. Develop Africa. Warm up your winter with great entertainment on Topster. Remember to get yourself a Topster DTT 199 Quacha this May. Then enjoy the best series, sports, and more. Cut all the best of the Bundesliga to the end of the season this month and see who becomes the champions of the world's best league, plus the climax of the first division one. That's not all. Make a date and witness the best of series on Novella E Plus.
and watch two wives in a story of love affairs and triangles every day at 2040 hours and the latest of Indian series on Star Life. And don't forget to watch Zambia's own Pungwa, the game duo, every Sunday at 19 hours and see Zambia to the world on Novella E+. So subscribe now for only 160 kwacha. Troopster, enjoy digital life. Are you looking for a place that sells fresh, healthy vegetables and fish? Well, look no further because New Roberts Fish and Veg Limited has what you are looking for. We have a wide variety of healthy products to satisfy your taste buds and help you in your healthy journey. Are you looking for a place that sells fresh, healthy vegetables and fish? Well, look no further because New Roberts Fish and Veg Limited has what you are looking for. We have a wide variety of healthy products to satisfy your taste buds and help you in your healthy journey. We have a fully stocked butchery. Farm produced vegetables. And live fish. Yes, you heard me correctly. For that guaranteed freshness. So what are you still waiting for? Call 0976 543 822 or 0955 108 708 or 0965 691 909 or visit Chilenje which is behind Total Gas Station. Because at New Roberts Fish and Veg Limited, we believe only fresh foods are good enough for you. Welcome back. Thank you so much for staying with us. The Zambia Revenue Authority has forfeited a 31-ton frontline truck intercepted last week on Saturday at Washimba Police Checkpoint in Kapuimposhi District of Central Province. The truck was carrying 358 bags of 50 kg of millimil, which was about to be smuggled into DRC. Central Province Permanent Secretary Milna told Crown Television Zambia in Kawe that the government has forfeited to the state the truck and the 358 bags of millimil from Zambia including the 1,214 bags of millimil that was found the same truck from South Africa. Mr. Monakampwe has further warned foreign nations who are involved in illegalities that government will not hesitate to deport them if they are found wanting. Meanwhile, the government has given the owner of the truck, Mr. Boni Kenga, a Congolese nation, national seven days to appeal over the seizure of his truck and minimal details in this report. The Congolese have continued to lay a havoc on Zambia's food security. Police at Wanshimba Police Checkpoint intercepted this truck belonging to Mr. Boni Kenge, a Congolese nation based in Osaka. The truck was carrying over 258 bags of 50 kg of minimal about to be smuggled into DRC. The vessel and the contraband was later moved to one of the named military containments. On Sunday, Mr. Kenge appeared before the Provincial Joint Operation led by the Provincial Minister, Credo Nanjua. Help us, sir. Are you a smuggler? Where is the documents which shows that they are in... They are in... They are what? They are in Congo but loaded this thing in your yard, isn't it? Yes. Who was loading? Just the casual. The casuals who gave them authority to load. It's me. It's you. So it's you who loaded. Why did you tell them to load? No, there's a, there was a small arrangement with the person who was helping me, buying me from South Africa. He asked me to do to him a favor. What is the favor? Of putting this. To take to Congo? Mm, uh, no, he didn't clarify it because even myself, I don't even know the, 
begin to carry fire. No, he asked for a favor from you to get Mirimi put on a truck which is headed to Congo. Did he tell you that when you load it, you drop in dollar or something? Or the whole consignment was supposed to go. And in the documentation there, why didn't you indicate with the agriculture that you have also loaded another consignment? The provincial administration has congratulated the driver of the truck, Mr. Joseph Banda, for showing royalty and patriotism to his country by exposing his boss in intention via a phone call. Mr. Banda did what a Zambian is supposed to do. National interest must come first before personal interest. And therefore, it was very clear, it's on record, that his employer was telling him run away, this matter will solve it, even if they, 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 they get the track, uh, we will sort it out within the next four days. Government has forfeited the contraband to the state together with the vessel. Mr. Kenge has been given seven days in which to appeal. Reporting for Crown TV News, I'm Afarinson Snalungu in Kabwe, Central Province. Meanwhile, small-scale farmers in Mokushi district have asked government to consider increasing the number of FISP beneficiaries to allow more farmers to benefit. This came to light during a central agriculture block show in Miafi, where individual farmers and cooperatives showcased their farm produce. Central agriculture block show chairperson Dudley Cavasso said the number of cooperatives have been formed, hence an increase in registered farmers but that the number of first beneficiaries have remained low. Meanwhile, Mukushi District Commissioner Jonathan Kapungwe says there are other deliberate programs that government has come up with to ensure that those not catered for under the first access farming input as well. Mukushi District has a total of 66,000 registered farmers with only 16,000 allocations and the first more in this report. Mukushi District in the central province is known for agriculture. This is because of the presence of commercial, emerging and small-scale farmers who greatly contribute to the national food basket. As you may be aware that when it comes to small-scale farmers, government has been supporting them through programs like FISIP and this is to help them become food secure. But the challenge in the district is the high number of registered farmers which is 66,000 and only 16,000 benefit from FISIP. This was mentioned by Mukoshi District Agriculture Coordinator Aki Milimo during the agriculture block show in Miafi. In the Mukoshi alone, there are 66,000 registered farmers. Out of this number, we are only allocated 16,000 who should benefit under farmer input support program. This one is really giving us a lot of headache and pressure. Farmers want government to increase the number of beneficiaries as well as ensuring that inputs are distributed early, unlike the previous farming season. We appeal through the government to consider us on the following. Number one, if possible, increasing fishing allocation as you are aware many groups were formed. To start the distribution of fishing inputs to farmers in July each year. Meanwhile, Wakusha District Commissioner Jonathan Kapungwe, who officiated at the Agriculture Block Show, highlighted other programs meant to help farmers have inputs, especially those who may not benefit under FISIP. We have a lot of people who have been able to get the money. We have a lot of people who have been able to get the
uh, my extension officers have a peko mwaka kauti basa mbili shaba antwa rengi ya ishi lelete so abantwa rengi taba ishi be a program according to the district leadership distribution of farming inputs will start in june next month and this is the hope of farmers joseph siambehi crown tv news mkoshe Two people of Maninga District have been arrested for being in possession of an AKA-47 rifle and 24 rounds of ammunition. The incident happened on May 5, 2023 at Kamipando area of Mufungwe District around 9.35 hours. Police Commanding Officer Dennis Mola has confirmed to Crown TV News in a statement in Solwezi District. Mr. Mola says police in the province had information that two people had in their possession an AK-47 at Chonga area. He says police followed it up in Chonga in Chongo area and the two suspects were brought to the police station after an interview. The duo reviewed that the AKA 47 rifle was in Mumbwa district. The police commanding officer further say the two suspects later led the police to Kapi, Kamipando area of Moshima of Mufungwe and the said AK-47 rifle where the serial number deformed was found and recovered from Isaac Chinyama. He has identified the two suspects as Godfrey Nyamuiza, aged 42, and Costa Mambwende, aged 42. Three suspects are expected to appear in court after investigations. We do have our letter to the president today. Letter to the president of Zambia. Subject Kariba Dam displaced families. Dear Mr. President, as a grandson of an indigenous community that lived in the Zambezi Valley along the Zambezi River, who are the owners of the ancestral land where Karipa Dam was constructed. I want to know whether your respectable office is aware that the same community is missing from the population register of Zambia for more than 50 years. Mr. President, for more than 50 years now, we are left without a place to call home as a village. Mr. President, by the grace of God, allow me to quote from Luke 15, 3-5. Supposing one has hundred sheep but lost one of them, will you not leave the ninety-nine sheep and go out to look for the lost one? Members of my community were forcefully removed from our ancestral land of Zambezi Valley by the British Protectorate and the World Bank to give way for the construction of the Kariba Dam. They were promised that after the construction of Kariba Dam, new land will be sourced and they will be brought back to set on it. For more than 50 years now, the United Kingdom and the World Bank have never honored this promise, despite knowing that what they did is now a gross violation, right of indigenous community people. Regards, Moses Hanketa, grandson of the Royal Indigenous Community of the Zambezi Valley. We take a break. Zambia will next month host the 22nd Common Market for Eastern and Southern Africa Summit for the Heads of State and Government at the Munungushi International Conference Center, Kenneth Kaunda Wing. The summit will take place from the 6th to the 8th of June, 2023. The theme of the summit is Economic Integration for a Thriving Comesa, anchored on green investment, value addition, and tourism. Over 3,000 delegates from the Comesa member states and beyond are expected to attend the Comesa Summit in Lusaka. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Information and Media. Sinema Fulet, 
Welcome back. A resident of Kamala South who is physically challenged, Boston Fali, she says it is urgent for government to work on drainages as the rental relief, which was given by the Disaster Management and Mitigation Unit for relocation of 94 families, have has finished and people will have to go back to their houses, which were once flooded. Mr. Fali, she says the money that was given by DMMU was temporal, and for him, he's doing some renovations, which he hopes would stand which hopes will withstand the flood situation, but that the government has a huge role to play in constructing drainages. And Ward Development Vice Chairperson Milanzi Masie says some residents have started doing some innovations after the relief rentals, which they were given, finished, and now they have to get back to their houses. He says residents should not misuse funds which were given by government, rather they should use the funds for the rightful purposes. Details in this report. The Disaster Management and Mitigation Unit released the funds which amounted to about 6000 each for rental relief for 94 families during the rainy season in which some houses were flooded. And now the money has finished and it looks like the residents have to go back to the reality of their houses. And a resident of Kamala South, Boston, Fualishi, who is a differently says the money was just temporary, but there is need for a permanent solution in Kamala South. He says since the money has finished, he's making some renovations in preparation for the rainy season. We got the three, uh, six thousands for us to, to be relocated, of which we left. As for, as for now, I'm here because I'm trying to do some bit of renovations and we are here. You can see that the place was damaged with the rains and so forth. Where we are, where we are standing right now. It was a place where you can't stand because the water could reach your knees. So whether you have gumboots or whatever, that was nothing at all. So we are trying to do some bit of renovations to see if we can relocate back. Okay. Yes. So uh, the money that you were given, part of it you used it for rentals and part of it you used it for renovations? No, 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 no. They, that was just enough for rentals. Where can you get a house whereby you can stay with the family for 500 kwacha or so? Yes, we had to look for the place where I would be able to stay with my family. As for now, the family is still not with me here. Yes, even me, I come once in a while, I come here to do some bit of work. As you can see, there is this gentleman helping me to do the works and so forth. So we haven't yet fully relocated back. Yeah, but even as for now, we are using uh, whatever we can come across to stay there where, where we are and uh, then our upkeep. And what Development Vice Chairperson Milanzi Masie says the money that was given was temporary and residents should use the money for the right purpose and not misappropriate it. And the, the intentions of the government were very clear for the location, but you know how us human beings are. We have a situation uh, where people use that money for other purposes. There is one example where uh, someone just came, in, came out uh, directly to say she used the money, for, she has started baking fritters and she's supplying to schools. But we had, go, we had gone further as a community, as they were to ask to say what happens if the rains come here. They categorically stated that uh, they will not come back to the government because that same money will make them self-sustained. 
they will buy the gravel, they will buy the material to raise the ground at their houses and so forth. So, but uh, the best is that when the government comes in to aid in such situation, people have to comply actually to relocate. With only six months left to the rainy season, some houses in Lusaka's Kamala South are still in a devastating state. Staubisum Chimba, reporting for Ground TV News in Lusaka. Some Lusaka's Chonga residents have lamented the newly installed sewer pipes in their community, charging that the sewer pipes, which were constructed by a company called Sino Hydro Limited, have begun bursting. The residents spoke to Crown TV, said each time the pipe bursts, a quick effect is felt in their homes. A resident, Dorcas Walia, has alluded that sometimes she finds it difficult walking on some of the local routes as the shallow drainages where the pipes are passing are too deep. And one of the Sino Hydro employers who spoke on behalf of the supervisor said the pipes are bursting because the installed pipes cannot withstand the pressure point for each pipe which is set by the Bissaka City Council. He said the pipes have burst more than three times today. Here's a report. After a week of bursting and more than three times today, the sewer pipes that have been put up by Sin Hydro Limited, a construction company, are a worrying concern for the residents of Chunga Township and Lusaka. The residents explains that the quark effect after the burst each time is worrisome because it can be felt in their homes. And Dokas Walia said she is finding it hard to cross the street in a condition as she is pregnant. Go dizzy. Development. But development development so no mbechi wipire, ama pipe si yonsi oko ya amesh, amesh tale isa. Elo no mbanga chachi tabasti, saun diwe ya kweba tama ya ndaya shaking. So tuwa chumfu emi timashafu moku isa alandako, ama weka zibasi no hydro wa mbachi chitali ya kiti ubu vi. Na tuishu wa tina vena vana nchitofe batinga, tuwa chita complaini vena tabafu hili okulanda, fia fika na pae extent ya kufaya okwa mbo okula alua, no okula tukisha nye nseli. Fia ingila munga ndefi menshi. So wapafu chachi poli kwa kwa tini bombo, no chari la nomba. Nomba toko waika shia nfuwa kwa tiaba naba no no. Chika podi kwa mtu wadi mbiaka fu. Amen, shia diya kumpompita ya moneka. Ni three weeks nomba, tuwa mkuta poko. Takuwa ba amen, shufu tuwa danda fuwa. Takuwa ba fiwa miyeko fasti. Fia la ipa ya ba ana. E project ya ma Chinese mandin, we don't know how long it's going to take. If we not kwa taba naba no no, and then yu kwa angala banga dila papene, opo banga dila. Ero ama pai piyabo, ila ya ishtafe basti. Anytime fia porika, anytime fia porika. So ine na likwata lotu no no, tu anga dila papene, ni mpepi no po vayi mbila. Ero then yu ama pizzi yabo ya tali. Na angu kutoro kanatu tuike fintu, we are failing. And one of the workers at Sin Hydro Limited who spoke on behalf of the supervisor said the pipes are bursting because they cannot withstand the pressure point of 16 that has been set up by the Lusaka City Council. I testing. So, when I was a little bit of a problem, I was testing. So, I was testing. So, I was testing. I was testing. I was testing. I was testing. I was Test. So nga ya fika ile ya mkufu kapa 15.5 so ndepa mene ima polika. Mm. So nga ya fika kuja, kanga tupa mpingi la kudawni kuja. So tuwenze bonze kuja. So kubwelo mvelo kwe watikuno ya, poli, ya polika. The fear that has been created in the minds of these people is either due to poor works by the said company or substandard material was used during the work. Purity Matafwadi, Crown TV News, Lusaka. Chief Mumena of the Kaunde people of Kalumbila district is dismayed by the increasing number of incest and defilement cases that have been recorded in the recent past. The traditional leader says the reported incest and defilement cases are just the tip of the iceberg, adding that there could be more cases in the community that go unreported. In an interview with Zanis in Solwezi district, Chief Mumena has attributed the immorality to money-making rituals. 
Chairwoman has since called for the coordinated multi-sectoral approach to curb the escalating cases of incest and defilement in the country. Chief Mumena, who is also Northwestern Provincial Council of Chiefs Chairperson, stressed the need for urgent behavioral change by incorporating more stakeholders, including theater, through the media across the country. Chief Mumena says there is need for vigorous campaign against the perseverance of incest cases, adding that a well-designated campaign program will help combat the abnormal and unacceptable sexual behaviors in society. Chief Momena's comment comes in the work of reports of incest and defilement cases involving fathers and their biological daughters. We do take our last set of commercials to join us the sports news and international news after this break. <laughs> Welcome you to the wonderful world of Savenda Electronics. At Savenda Electronics, we pride ourselves in manufacturing high-quality electricity and water meters. Boasting of the first of its kind state-of-the-art manufacturing plant in Zambia, Savenda Electronics manufactures customized smart electricity and water meters of international standards for both the local and international water and electricity utility companies. Our highly computerized factory run by qualified staff makes, calibrates, and electronically tests the smart meters to ensure only those meeting customer specifications are delivered to the market. Some of the main features which come with our meters includes notifications about low units, tempering, low battery, and many more customized features. Savenda Electronics provides on and off-site after-sales service and has favorable contract terms for water and electricity utility companies. Savenda Electronics, the real deal. people welcome to the most happening game show in the Netherlands. my name is edna i am the people's bay and this is pungwa the game duo now on this show two celebrities or two influencers compete in a series of games at the end of it all somebody gets to walk away with some cool cash or maybe should i say chipukra is moody which is one time it's not the homicide. side it's what ah let me think again ah no i think i've got this one the gross side Grocery stores. <laughs> <laughs> that thing, that thing. Mm. Especially that I am going to annihilate Mumbai Archie. Uh -huh. What are you doing? Are you good? I'm a spelling school. Ah, the question. Yes or no? What matters is to not grad. The question is, could the police officer are good? Do? Uh, I'll pocket in cash. Stop that. Imagine, eh? That's what I'm thinking about. Stop recording. It is Pumba the Game Duo, and let the celebrity games begin! In our international news, fighting reported despite humanitarian truce. For more in our international stories, we did monitor Al Jazeera.
Heavy fighting in Sudan threatens a fragile ceasefire that was meant to allow in humanitarian aid. The few hospitals still standing are desperately in need of medical equipment. We'll have a few full report. China says the U.S. and its allies are conducting a disinformation campaign after Western nations accuse it of spying. Plus, you must try to ignore that it means more than The end of a musical era global superstar Tina Turner, who's known as the queen of rock and roll, has died at the age of 83. Again in Sudan, where heavy fighting is threatening a fragile ceasefire aimed at allowing much needed humanitarian aid into the country. A fighter jet was shot down in Omdurman, northwest of Khartoum, and artillery fire has been reported near a military base. The Sudanese army and the rival paramilitary group, the Rapid Support Forces, have been locked in a power struggle for more than a month. Saudi Arabia and the U.S. brokered the ceasefire on Monday. Iba Morgan has more from the city of Omdurman. Residents in the cities of Umdurman and Khartoum reported that they were able to hear gunfire overnight being exchanged between the Rapid Support Forces and the Sudanese Army. Now, in the early hours of Thursday, we were able to hear reconnaissance planes flying overhead in the city of Umdurman. And when we spoke to people in Khartoum city, they say that they also were able to hear the plane. This comes after a day of heavy fighting between the RSF and the Sudanese Army. The RSF claims that it shot down a fighter jet belonging to the army, but the army says that the plane crashed due, a, due to a technical error on the part of the plane and that it was not due to a surface-to-air missile being fired by the rapid support forces. Fighting on Wednesday also ensued in the city of Khartoum in the western part around the currency printing press. Now the army says that the RSF, despite the ceasefire, took over the building for a few hours and that they had to attack to defend the building. Now all this is a violation of the ceasefire. Fighter jets should not be flying overhead and the use of heavy artillery, especially in residential areas, should not be happening. So this ceasefire uh, in the first two days did not hold. People here in Khartoum state say that they hope that the third day, Thursday, would actually prove to be better than the first and the second day of the ceasefire because of the humanitarian situation on the ground, especially when it comes to the medical situation for those who are in need of medical assistance. We visited a hospital in Umdurman on Wednesday and this is what we saw. Normally, Anwar Bakri brings her mother to a renal dialysis center twice a week, but since the start of fighting, getting access to a hospital with the needed facilities has been difficult. Since the start of the war, the health facility we do the dialysis in closed. We went to another hospital and started there, but they were only able to do the dialysis for two hours. We tried several others, but Khartoum North generally has no power or running water. This is my mother's first dialysis in two weeks. Most of the patients in the dialysis ward here in Al No Hospital in Umdurman City have traveled to get here. The fightings led to most of the 29 hospitals in Khartoum unable to function. Healthcare facilities have been under pressure since the start of the conflict. Some have had to turn away patients because they don't have the space or medicine to treat them. Others have closed their doors out of fear of being caught up in the fighting or because of damages to their buildings. This hospital is one of the few remaining providing renal treatments to patients, but the staff say they may not be able to do so for long. Patients who come in need dialysis three times a week, can only get one session, and even the dialysis is changing here due to a shortage in its needs. We don't have enough dialyzers or artificial kidneys. Today is the last day for us to treat kidney patients. We don't even have tubes and gloves. There's nothing left. Medical staff are in short supply. Volunteers help run the hospital's operations. 
I'm here because of my sense of responsibility and nationalism. This is my country and this is the least I can offer. The people who come here are our friends, brothers, neighbors, and even if we don't know them, we're all the same blood, so we all need to stand together. A ceasefire signed between the warring parties is meant to open humanitarian corridors for those in need of medical assistance, but the fighting continues, threatening to make a dire situation even worse. Hiba Morgan Al Jazeera, Umdurman. And in our sports news, the 2012 AFCON winning legends have reunited for their glory of 11 years ago to beat Barcelona legends in an exposition match at National Hero Stadium in the soccer, three goals to nil. The match was set to raise Zambia's football footprint as a catalyst to lift the country's tourism with an impact of the Barcelona legends and the icons of the 2012 AFCON winning team. Zambia was led by captain Christopher Katongo, who hosted the trophy in Liberal, over a decade ago after beating a highly rated Ivory Coast side led by Deirdre Drogba. The football icon Kalusha Walia was onto the bench before replacing Rainford Kalava on the pitch to relieve his stint as he saw the first half goal from the legend Collins Mesuma, which was followed by the second goal of James Chamanga who registered himself on the score sheet after the relentless second attempt to silence the Barcelona legends backed by Clifford Mulenga who first frustrated the Brazilian retired star Ronaldinho. We have come to the end of the news, but before we go, a recap of our headlines. President Haga in the Ichinama honors 22 Zambians at this year's Africa Freedom Day celebrations. ZRA intercepts 358 smuggled bags of minimal destined for DRC. In our international news, fighting reported despite humanitarian truce. Remember to catch up our program called CDF Spotlight, where our forecast for today is Sananga Constituency. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Tandiwe Banda Kavaso. Pleasant viewing and God bless you. Zambia's economy, we need to support our very own. From mining to manufacturing, general service and all locally motivated effort in between. This means we live, eat, drink, work, play and sleep a local Zambian lifestyle. Support local products and businesses because nothing beats unity and loyalty. Zambia's glory is a shared responsibility. We need to support that which is ours. Buy local. Local is Laka. Buy Z. Buy Zambian local products and services. Social economic growth, national pride, and jobs. Zambia will next month host the 22nd Common Market for Eastern and Southern Africa Summit for the Heads of State and Government at the Munungushi International Conference Center, Kenneth Kaunda Wing. 
The summit would take place from the 6th to the 8th of June, 2023. The theme of the summit is Economic Integration for a Thriving Comesa, anchored on green investment, value addition, and tourism. Over 3,000 delegates from the Comesa member states and beyond are expected to attend the Comesa Summit in Lusaka. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Information and Media.